Welcome to Science Easy Tech Channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about an important through experimental research design. Yes, it is none other than Solomon Four Group Design. So, the content what we are going to deal in this video is sufficient for 5 marks because they have asked in university question paper Solomon Four Group Design for 5 marks from Dr. NTR. University of Health Sciences. This video will be useful for BSc nursing students and post basic BSc nursing students. Before moving on to the topic, if you are new to Science Easy Tech channel, just take a moment to subscribe our channel and also to press the notification bell icon in order to get connected with our latest updates. Already we have posted many videos with related to nursing research and statistics. Exclusively for, exclusively for statistics statistics also we have created a separate playlist let's move on to the content what we are going to discuss in this video that is through experimental design under the through experimental design the content for today's video is solomon four group design what is solomon four group design in the name itself it tells it was a identified or developed by Solomon, Richard Solomon in the year 1949 and in the name they are telling how many groups are there, yes there are four groups out of which two are in experimental group and two are in control group. So it is a through experimental research design which was developed by Richard Solomon in the year 1949. Where and all we can apply this Solomon four group design in the field of social science, psychology and medicine. It can also be used if there are concerns that the treatment only has um, effect, that the treatment has only produced the effect in the post test and uh, the pre test is not going to have an influence on the treatment results. So let me explain as the video goes on I will explain about this topic or point. It can be used if there are concerns that the treatment might be sensitized by the pretest. For example suppose if I am doing a pretest and if I am giving an intervention and if I am doing a post test for example in structured teaching program I want to assess the effectiveness of structured teaching program on diabetes mellitus. So I am giving a pre-test to assess the knowledge of uh, uh, group 1 or first year students uh, to assess the knowledge on diabetes mellitus. So this pre-test. Then after that after one or two days uh, I am giving the intervention. Then after four days or I am giving post test. So I cannot tell only my teaching is effective and because of that only the post test results have gone up because some students may be very studious even though in the pre-test itself some questions they are having doubt means they will be referring and they will be uh, giving answers for that also. So whether that pre-test effect is there on the post-test to identify that only we are using this Solomon four group design. So we are using four groups. So here there are two experimental groups and two control groups as I have told earlier that is experimental group 1 and experimental group 2. Control group 1 and control group 2. So the researcher randomly assigns subjects to the four groups. So when we want to tell whether it is an experimental design means you should have experimental group and control group. Then there should be manipulation or treatment and random assignment of samples. These three criteria should be followed when there is going to be a through experimental design. What is that? You should have control group and you should have manipulation or treatment should be done an experiment should be done and you should randomly assign the subjects to the experimental group and control group you should not have any prejudice or bias when you are assigning it so randomization is must so first to what you have to do you have to randomly assign the subjects to the four groups so you don't know which person are going for a experimental group one experimental group two control group one and control group two like that so next to what you can do in in experimental group 1 what you are doing you are giving pre-test then you are giving an intervention or treatment then you are doing post-test but in control group 1 you are doing only pre-test 
but there is no treatment and you are doing post test next in experimental group 2 there is no pre test at all only you are giving treatment and you are assessing the post test next in control group 2 there is no pre test no treatment but only you are doing post test so let me explain the previous example i have told no a study to assess the effectiveness of structured teaching program on diabetes mellitus whether it is increasing the knowledge or not like that so pre test you are giving a questionnaire on diabetes mellitus for experimental group 1 then you are doing a structured teaching program okay on diabetes mellitus then you are doing post test you are assessing the post test knowledge on diabetes mellitus in control group what you are doing only you are taking pre test on diabetes mellitus you are not giving any structured teaching program on diabetes mellitus then you are doing post test uh, on assessing the knowledge on diabetes mellitus in experimental group 2 you are not doing any pre-test directly you are giving structured teaching program and what you are doing you are doing the post test whereas in control group 2 you are not doing any pre-test you are not giving any structured teaching program but only you are assessing the post test level of knowledge okay so in this way you have to do the Solomon four group design. So first, what are all the four steps in Solomon four group design? So first, what you have to do? So Solomon four steps in group design. So in Solomon four groups design, what are the steps? Randomly assign the subjects to the four groups. Experimental group one and control group 1 they receive pre-test see here experimental group 1 and control group 1 receives pre-test okay next treatment is given to the experimental group 1 and experimental group 2 so treatment is given where in experimental group 1 and experimental group 2 but post test is done post test is done for all four groups so post test is done for all four groups so you can see experimental group control group one two everything post test they have done okay so let us explain this in schematic representation so randomly you are assigning the subjects what to experimental group one control group one experimental group two and control group two next what you have to do you in experimental group one you have to do pre-test in control group one also you have done pre-test okay so treatment for whom you have given experimental group one and experimental group two treatment is given okay uh, for control group one there is no treatment then for uh, control group two there is no pretest and no treatment okay so next but what you has been uniformly done for all the groups post test is done for all the groups okay so next we will see interpretation of results so the effect of independent variable that is the experimental variable that is the structure teaching program the example what i have told is the structure teaching program okay so the effect of independent variable is assessed on the dependent variable dependent variable means was knowledge level of the group on diabetes mellitus okay what uh, i have told the example that only i am relating okay so the effect of independent variable that is the structured teaching program in the example what i have told is assessed on the dependent variable that is what you are going to assess the knowledge level only you are going to assess no whether it is increased or decreased so you can um, you can observe the dependent variable and you can compare the effects so how you have to compare experimental group one you have to compare with control group one and experimental group two you have to compare with control group two so experimental group one control group one these to be compared and experimental group two and control group two these two things to be compared okay so to estimate the amount of change in experimental and control group uh, uh, 2 the average test scores of experimental and control group 1 are taken as a baseline okay so uh, you can have a baseline data of experimental group 1 and control group 1 to compare the results of experimental group 2 and control group 2 okay so the uh, average of uh, experimental and control group 1 can be taken 
what are the statistical tools used for calculation of solomon four group design if you are using what are all the statistical methods can be followed is regression analysis stauffer's z method and monte carlo carlo method regression analysis stauffer's z method and monte carlo method so what are the advantages as i have told it is one of the most um, thing uh, prestigious experimental design because it follows all the criteria it can tell that only the treatment because of the treatment only the post test values have increased the post test level of knowledge or anything for that matter the post test has been increased only because of the effectiveness of treatment it so it clearly tells that the pre test has no way influence the treatment okay so it minimizes threat to both external and internal validity threats are there no so i will post a separate video on internal validity and external validity threats so it minimizes the threats to internal and external validity this design effectively predicts the reactivity of pre test so how how the pretest is influencing the study also can be um, told by this test so when you want to assess structured teaching program this is somewhat difficult but this is the most app appropriate method for assessing the uh, test which is uh, research which is involving structured teaching programs any difference between the experimental and control group can be more confidently attributed to the experiment treatment so i have as i have told earlier you can you can argue very boldly 100% that you can tell that because of your uh, treatment uh, only treatment measure or experiment only the results have been produced what are the disadvantages large sample is required statistical analysis is difficult and that's why it is used very minimally in healthcare researches okay hope this video is clear for you all if you like my video please give me a thumbs up share and subscribe to science cz tech channel my previous videos link i have given in description box suggested end card and i card or you can watch our channel playlist for more nursing related videos thank you friends keep supporting to science easy tech channel